Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby and welcome back to World of Tanks. And today I'm going to be playing, for the first time ever I believe on my YouTube channel, the Baby Mouse, aka the Moistian at Tier 9. And while this is the Baby Mouse, it still weighs 170 tons, making it, I believe, the second heaviest vehicle inside the game, behind its bigger brother, the mouse that everybody wants to, to play. Now the mouse at Tier 10, it's iconic. Uh, it's one of possibly the most fun tanks, at least for me, inside the game. And I also think it's one of the highest skill cap tanks inside the game as well, with so much opportunity to really angle your armor, and there's a lot of intricacy with how you do it. Now the Moistian doesn't really have the, the same kind of armor with regards to the way that the turret works, because if you overangle the turret, because of the fact that it's kind of like got this bow shape here, it kind of becomes a bit of an issue. So really with the Moistian, you, you can, you, you want to angle it a little bit, but if you, as soon as you do it too much, the side of your turret does become a real big issue on this tank. And also, unlike its bigger brother, it has a horrible weak point on top. So I'm playing the Moistian today, semi-stock. I don't have the top engine in this game, but I was actually compensating for the lack of the top engine by using some uh, fuel improvement on the on the directive on this tank. So if you do have those for the Moistian, boy it helps because god are we slow right now. Even with the turbo, I'm chugging along right now at 12 kilometers an hour. One of the reasons why I never really liked the Moistian is because I did something really stupid with it on my main account the very first time that I played it. I decided that I wanted to do a test. So I played the vehicle stock with the, uh, the stock tracks. I already had the mouse from when it used to lead on from the VK4502B. And um, yeah, I can tell you playing the Moistian with stock tracks and stock engine, stock everything was absolutely brutal. I ended up getting frothing at the mouth, angry at how awful it was. And funnily enough, uh, uh, about a few months later, I think Wargaming realized about just how unplayable the Moistian was stock. And they actually buffed the tracks, the ground resistances, on the stock tracks only because it was just performing so badly. And a lot of people probably got to tier 9, played the Moistian, and went, oh, this isn't even worth it, I'm quitting this game. Imagine that, you've grinded all the way up to tier 9 and then it just becomes this, like, unplayable experience. I mean, playing tier 9 with all of the knowledge in the game alone is hard enough, let alone having to play tier 9 with stock tracks in their kind of pre buffed form for the Moistian must have been horrendous. So the Moistian and the Mouse, these big behemoths, and I like to play these tanks uh, with durability device to be able to maximize my hit points. You can see I've got 2,530 hit points on this tank without the field mods that will add an extra 10% hit points to this vehicle, I believe. And I am also adding on vents and a turbo. Now you might be thinking, QB, why aren't you using a gun rammer? Well, I... Don't get me wrong, I would love to use a gun rammer on, on my mouse and my Moistian, but I feel like the vents just give me better value. Because these tanks, they aren't really damage per minute based. And the vents, with the improvement to the accuracy, improvement to the view range, improvement to the traverse speed, improvement to the ground resistances, as they do boost up your driver skill, will actually help the mobility of this tank. And quite often being able to turn and face your opponents and to have just a little bit better aim time for your to snapshot as I don't use vertical stabilizers on this tank, I feel will outweigh the 7% better rate of fire you would have using a gun rammer over vents. And it seems to be working out for me, at least on my mouse, uh, not so much on my free-to-play account on my Moistian. As you can see, I'm using a regular fire extinguisher playing on my Plays for Free account today. It's an account that I started back in 2018 to make sure that I still stay in touch with how people play irrelevant of how much money they spend on the game and considering things going into like what plus recently where now you've got that kind of like super level of premium with the all the advantages that come with that i think the free to play account is even more important i've been playing it a lot recently at the start of pretty much most streams i play the, the free to play account for one two sometimes three hours as i it depends on what kind of tanks are top of the tree and whether I already have them as to uh, how painful it is to be able to grind up. And now that the, the French tank destroyers are currently top of the tree, yeah, I'm investing some time in some of those stock French TDs uh, begrudgingly to try and make my way up towards the Bosch B. So, the Moistian in this kind of a position, it's just this behemoth that wants to sit and just hold 
the line. I feel like you have to have your opponents come to you in a scenario like this, and I really don't want to go around the corner against the tortoise. I will be firing some gold rounds in this game. The gold rounds on this tank will help massively against a vehicle like the E75. Your penetration goes up from 246 all the way up to 311. So pretty much the only reason why I was able to even go through that E75's turret there was because I was firing gold. Now, having intuition on a vehicle like this... Oh, that was an awful shot. I really flinched that as he went around the corner. Having intuition on a tank like this can really help if you have a skilled loader. I don't think I have intuition. I don't think my loaders were skilled enough. I think I was getting pretty much a, a new couple of loaders on this tank. And only really the commander has that high level. So in, it's, it's always awkward in a way. On the account that I don't want to spend money on, sometimes I'm lacking the crew skills that help, helps me to not actually have to spend money like intuition. But whether intuition is going to be better than something like Brothers in Arms or Repairs, definitely not. Is it better than safe stowage on this vehicle? Mm, possibly, but having to have it on two loaders, you probably want to still get safe stowage and adrenaline rush on this tank before you consider getting intuition across both of them. Alright, so pretty darn good game so far, at least with when I'm actually hitting the enemy tanks. We're up to 2,400 damage. We haven't really lost many of our 2,500 hit points, although I was starting to get worried at this stage of the game, considering that uh, our team is still down 2,000 hit points and down a frag as well. You've got to be careful. You aren't going to be staying in a game for very long uh, if you allow all of your team to melt. And that's one of my biggest recommendations when you are playing one of these super heavy tanks, is that you should always factor in that you sometimes have to commit your hit points, even when it's not favorable to do so, just to be able to look after your team and keep them in the game. Because you aren't going to do very well in a 1 versus 5 scenario. You really aren't going to do well in kind of like fighting 2 or 3 tanks at the same time in this vehicle. Because suddenly your hit points aren't really intimidating and they're more of an opportunity to farm like a big EXP pinata for the enemy team. So I'm letting this 50TP know I'll help him. I wanted to go and take a look at the KV-5. I bounce a Borsig from the other side of the map and make sure I mark him out as to where they are. This tortoise is terrifying for this kind of a matchup. While I do have all the hit points, they have all of the damage per minute. I asked the 50TP to come and help me against the TL-7. It's the new tier 9 American tank destroyer, and it's firing gold at me here with 300 millimeters of pen, and it manages to pen three out of four rounds. Really painful stuff. Luckily, I return fire and kind of make it not more or less an even trade in that scenario. I'm asking the heavies towards the north to come and help me out, and I really need to help this 50 TP in this situation. So I've got a thousand hit point tortoise there, and I figure out I can't really stand and fight this guy. I'm going to have to go into the dip, but I know the TL7 will be reloading for just a little bit longer. So I'm actually going to focus the tortoise here, and then I'm going to turn my attention to the TL7. Now I just want to try and stop this guy from being able to uh, get around me. Maybe I can even ram them in this situation. I hit them for 44. Come on, turn, 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 turn. Bounce the first gold round from the TL7. Next one just over the back of the tank. Want to try and angle for the KV-5 now as well. And this is where the stock engine is very painful on this tank. The engine does end up making a big difference as your horsepower goes up significantly. And even with the top engine, your horsepower on this tank is still um, just managing to get over 10. Which is truly horrendous for this vehicle. Okay, so 451 hit points. Still enough to take a hit from any of the vehicles on the enemy team. 4,800 damage and 4 kills. Oh, I'm loving this. And oh my goodness gracious. Looks like I did have some intuition, but that was a very slow shell switch. So it looks like maybe I've only got intuition trained up to like 30, 40, maybe 50% there. Or possibly intuition on only one of my loaders. Wish I had actually switched a little bit earlier. The amount of gold rounds I fired in this game don't really make this feel like the true free-to-play experience. All right, come on, 20 kilometers an hour. Let's get that turbo going. I'm going to let no, the IS-6 Berlin, or Black Edition, sorry, know that I'm going to be able to help them in this situation. And boom, right through the upper hull of the there, picking up our fifth kill. But even with that fifth kill, we are still neck and neck on hit points with the enemy team. And I decided to repair my tracks there because I'm not going to get... I'm not going to have to fight for at least another minute. And so I think repairing my tracks so that I can make sure that they can take two hits, it's something that I will very rarely do. But if I know that I'm going to be out of the fight for a very long time, I do feel like it might be worth it. Even with a durability device like this, uh, 
and which will help how quickly I can repair the tracks on the tank. By repairing them, all of that extra health that I have on the tracks from them not being yellow but from being full health will mean that I'm definitely going to have to get shot in the twacks. The twacks? <laughs> so goodness gracious. Going to have to get shot in the twacks at least twice for them to be able to uh, take my twacks off. Yes. Okay, so I'm intuition switching here to an HE shell because I think I was expecting to hopefully uh, get a little bit of a revenge on that Borsig. Even though I think they were just ricocheting off me. Dang, this is just the, the quintessential Moistian game and quintessential moist, uh, mouse game even as well. Blocking more damage than your hit points, being down to low amounts of hit points but still remaining in the game because you just get so many to begin with. And whoa, here's the G-Saw, 1,250 hit points. I don't think they're going to be able to take my HE shell very much, but oh, it's starting to get a little bit nervous now. With the Borsig actually killing the TL7 and the G-Saw finishing off the IS-6B, Luckily for us, our G-Saw 1008 manages to put in a good couple of rounds there into the G-Saw. I fire an AP round over the ridge line. I switched out to AP there because I guess I wanted to be able to overmatch the G-Saw as well there. Although with the amount of hit points they're on, I think an HE shell would have been fine as well. But the uh, the HE actually has the same shell velocity as the AP, so there was probably no point in switching to the AP there. I'm raising the gun. I'm celebrating. I think I'm just a little bit happy that I believe that this was the last time I had to play this tank with the stock engine. And boy, does it look slow right now. So this isn't going to be the only game that I play in the moisture for you today. After this, I'm going to be switching it up onto my main account and see if you can see the differences between a moisture that doesn't have the field mods and a moisture that may have some of the field mods at least, and also that top engine. And what a difference a premium consumable can make. And oh, shame on you, Mr. Borsig. They end up driving off a cliff to be able to uh, get themselves uh, avoiding having to deal with us at the end of the game. And oh man, when you have rounds like this, it doesn't matter if you're slow. It doesn't matter if you have the stock engine. It still feels awesome to be driving around in this German behemoth. So the gloves are truly off now. I have all of the pay to win advantages. You can see my hit points are a little bit more up as we have uh, at least a couple of the field mods, I hope. That second field mod on this vehicle really, really helps with the mobility of the tank because you improve your ground resistances. And we're going to be using a premium consumable as well, which will make everything about my tank 5% better. Although on a map like this, uh, the 5% everything better really, it will help a little bit. But it, I think one of the biggest helps for the premium consumable is just pumping up your view range on maps like uh, Prokhorovka or Malinovka. I think having that, like, 5% increase to your view range where you're literally getting about like 20 extra meters can really really help uh, heavy tanks to be able to not only spot for themselves but sometimes spot for their allies. So a great start to this battle picking off a cheeky Borask and now this is just pure mouse gameplay. You want to angle your hull, angle your turret, bounce your opponents but not be afraid to also give it back. With the alpha damage on this tank, 490, it does mean that you're pretty much out trading most things. And anything that does have higher alpha damage, you hope that you're going to be able to put in multiple rounds. And look at this absolute jam on the enemy team right now. I was thinking about coming around the corner, but against these tier 10 tanks like the 50M and the Rhinoceronte, I really don't want that to be the case. So you want to angle your armor, your hull like this, and then your turret come around the corner. And you basically want to turn your turret snap and then turn your turret back. But with the moisture, it's not as essential to turn the turret as it is with the mouse. It's more about kind of like avoiding them hitting either your weak point or hitting your cheeks in this tank. Again, as I said, if you overangle the turret on this vehicle, unlike the mouse, then you will actually make the side of your turret a bit of a weak point. So be careful with that. So you see that I'm actually making sure that I don't overangle the side there because you'll be surprised what kind of uh, rounds can manage to go through that, especially heat rounds. And this is just lovely right now. I am just farming tier 10 tanks in the side. And this is where, like, you've just got so many hit points, so much armor, that your opponents really don't want to shoot you, and they'd probably rather shoot the other tanks. But also, they've just got themselves into a very, fairly awkward situation here. But this game's still pretty much neck and neck. Each team has destroyed five tanks on the enemy team, and we're only up by a thousand hit points, even though we've been farming so hard. And I decided, all right, Mouse has just got to go. And this is where you've got so many hit points and so much armor that you don't mind coming around the corner to take a risk. 
But even just trading, I don't mind taking 400 damage if I'm going to take a vehicle out. Especially if it's something dangerous like an M103. And then, okay. Well, now I'm really throwing my weight around. I'm going to actually ram an E100 from behind. I actually do 229 damage to an E100. I angle my turrets so they can't manage to be able to get me. And I'm actually pushing them out into the open here. And I thought about overmatching their roof deck. Oh, man. That's something you don't see very often, right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? Something ramming an E100 and out-trading it significantly. I ram them for 229, only take 24 in return. That's a 10 to 1 ratio on hit points. And you know what? If you were to trade all of your Moistian's hit points at a 10 to 1 ratio, yeah, you'd be doing 25,000 damage in a battle. So not too shabby. So in this kind of a situation, I thought it was more important to go and try and fight all of the tanks down the other flank and to also maybe try and harass the cap circle here than it would be to try and chase uh, tanks that my faster vehicles are going to take out. I'm happy for the Char Future 4, I'm happy for the 122TM to be able to go and handle those two vehicles. And instead, I'm going to go and try and get some shots down this alleyway. I was thinking the Borask was going to cross there. Um, they might still do, and I don't think that they've seen the Moistian at the end of the line. And this truly is the end of the line for the Tier 8 French Premium Medium Tank. And yeah, the, I'm looking for the TVP here. I'm trying to be cheeky, see if I can catch the TVP in the side of the turret. But you know what? I just got the, the back of a Tiger 2 who doesn't use a fire extinguisher as well. Ouch, mate. Uh, although, I, I'm not using a fire extinguisher as well here. Uh, burn, baby, burn would be the case if they were to catch my engine and my fuel tanks multiple times. Now we're up to six kills, 5,300 damage. How much higher can we go? I'm going to put a round in, hopefully, to the Kari. Actually, bounce a regular round there. They're angling their armor well. I probably should have uh, intuition switched to a gold round there. But again, not sure uh, exactly how much intuition I do have on my Moistian. It's not really the tank which I ever thought. Oh, I really want to have a good crew for the Moistian. Because I always thought of it as kind of like the uh, the mother-in-law tank that you have to put up with to be able to get to the bride, which is going to be the, uh, the mouse. Uh, full disclosure, though. My mother-in-law is actually thumbs up amazing awesome. So I think I have to stop using that analogy like I used to use back in the day. All right. Finish off the Kari. Turn our attention now towards advancing towards the S1. I asked my Char 4 for some help because I'm a bit worried about whether they're going to be able to shut me down. And let's see whether it's going to be a Radley Walters medal. Let the chips fall where they may. I guess I could have held my shot there to uh, steal the Radley Walters medal. But I always feel that um, you look really, really stupid if you try to steal a kill and then maybe get some bad RNG or a bounce. Plus, I thought the TVP would still be there. I guess I make a bit of a misplay at the end where I, I could have just sat behind the building and maybe got the TVP there. But ladies and gents, that's 6,600 damage and destroying nearly half of the enemy team in a Moistian in a tier 10 matchup, albeit for a nice map for this tank. That is certainly my kind of game. So the first game on El Halouf was my first ever ace tanker for the Plays for Free account with 1,462 base experience and a high caliber for that meaty 5,800 damage. I did end up firing a lot more gold than I usually would do on my free-to-play account, but including the reserve stock, we still made a 4,000 credit profit. And the second game was my first mark of excellence on my main account, and also my first ever ace tanker. A high caliber for the 6,600 damage and a top gun for destroying half of the enemy team. And this time, we made a nice profit as we didn't fire nearly as many gold rounds. So all in all, the Moistian. It's definitely not as epic to play as the tier 10 mouse. This is truly the, the diet version of the tank. Although in this case, the diet version still weighs 170 tons. The Moistian is getting a very decent win ratio for the tier 9 heavy tanks towards the top third of the list. And while it's undoubtedly balanced, I think what truly spoils this vehicle is just those weak points and the lack of raw hit points that you get at tier 10. Although, as I've shown today, and as the statistics are showing, there's absolutely no reason why you can't have fun and do well in the baby mouse just like you can in its bigger brother. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was it for today. Really hope you enjoyed this heavy-duty German gameplay. If you did, give the video a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And if you're watching this video as it's released on Friday, I'm going live all day on twitch.tv forward slash quickiebaby to be able to give you more tokens so you can get cool things like the styles, days of premium, five times experience missions, or premium consumables. So swing by, check out some gameplay, and get some rewards too. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic, and hopefully I'll see you soon.